don't be overconfident, one foot in front of the other, keep going and you will make it. So, this will be you on the summit if you sign up today. You will be on the roof of Africa, that's the highest freestanding mountain in the world. Um, it's very chilly as you can see. Um, I don't recommend, I think we've had some people have like shut off, you know, pictures and all this and that's just craziness to me, but if you want to do that, go for it. Um, whatever you want, you know, it's, it's, it's your day. And this is going to be an amazing moment and all the tiredness, all the fatigue, you know, everything will just kind of evaporate away because you can reach a summit and you'll get that adrenaline rush. Um, and you'll think, oh, I finished, it's great. I'm at the end, but of course now you've got to come back down. So, we'll be staying off at the summit for about half an hour, just to give you guys all time, take pictures, have a look around, enjoy the view, take it in, and then you'll be coming back down. So it's actually four days up and one day down, which sounds ridiculous. Um, but you'll find that as you're walking down, with every step, your breath gets easier, you feel more energised, the air gets thicker, and you'll find that by the time you get to camp, you're actually feeling a lot better, a lot more energised. So on day five, we'll go from this, so that's the glacier at the top, right back down to the jungle from day one. Um, and you'll camp here, um, you'll have a meal, you'll rest, um, and then it's on back to Moshi the next day. Okay, um, so after you've returned to Moshi, um, it's hot showers and cold drinks. Everyone goes out for a celebratory meal, you can get a few beers in, whatever you like. Um, that's, that's what people um, tend to look forward to, that hot shower at the end. Um, there's a couple of options you can do now. You can either fly straight home um, or you can stay on for a little bit more and do some extra travel. Um, you guys can do your, plan, plan your own travel, do your own thing if you want to stay out and travel a bit more. Or we do offer a couple of extra um, travelling packages. Um, if you guys sign up, uh, I will send out you loads more information about these. Um, but very briefly, we do offer a safari package um, with a beach stay in Zanzibar at the end. Or if you're feeling super like you really want to chill out, um, then we do just the Zanzibar package. Um, so you could be on the beach with a cocktail, um, having a well-deserved rest. Right, everyone asks me about this in every talk I'm doing, so I'm just going to cover it very briefly. Um, there are no showers or toilets in the mountain, um, well, proper ones. There's these kind of long drop toilets um, in the camps. So what I would recommend is, okay, best view from a toilet in the world, not the nicest toilet in the world. Don't look down, that's my recommendation. Um, if you want to, if you really want to, you can hire a toilet tent. Um, but just let us know in advance. Um, and it's kind of like something the porters can carry up and sell for you. Um, so we do offer that. So if that's something you feel like you need to do, just let us know and we can sort that out for you. So the porters carry out like, all our clothing even when we come back to Moshi and you'll be... Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> They're super human, it's amazing. <laughs> Um, so this is the itinerary, um, just briefly again. Um, so you've got the trek, you can, either, you can either come straight back or you can stay if you're in independent travel. Or if you want to book your own flights, which you can do with a lot of the <coughs> target, um, then you can um, stay as long as you like in Tanzania or travel around whatever you want to do. Because I know a lot of people like to tie this kind of thing into maybe a bit of travelling around um, somewhere you not normally go. So, oh, I think it's about eight hours. As, as I can remember, I was asleep for most of it. Okay, so you're probably having three thoughts most people have. So can I do it? What do I need and how much will it cost me? So the answer is, if you're over 18, if you can walk, and if you have a passport, yes, you can do it. Um, it always helps to get some training in, um, do some hill walking, walk with your kit on, stuff like that, to get used to it, but yes, you absolutely can do it. It's 50% physical and it's 50% mental, um, mental. And if you, um, you'll get like a great kind of camaraderie with everyone, you'll all support each other. Um, as long as you're determined and you do some training, you should be absolutely fine. Um, what do you need? So I'm gonna cover this a bit more in the next section, just very briefly. We do send out an info pack with um, a huge kit list on, um, everything you need in detail. There's a lot of stuff you can hire in country, um, but I'll go through that a bit more. And also how much, so I will chat to you about fundraising targets and also about extra costs as well. So with the training, we recommend you start early and start steady. So um, it's not as it's not as you know straightforward as just going to the gym, although that certainly helps. Um, you can make small changes as well. It sounds really silly, but just taking the stairs, cycling to work, walking to work, rather than driving, um, just small changes like, like that will start to raise your fitness levels. 
Um, we recommend you do some training walks. Um, I don't know if there's anywhere nice and clean around here. I think Jane will talk a bit about that later. Um, walk up hills um, all the time, like get your kit on as well. Um, when you buy your boots, if you're going to get some new boots, make sure you break your boots in because the last thing you want to do is get to the mountain with your brand new walking boots, put them on and get blisters. So you need to wear them in, it's really important. And also um, walk with your bag on to make sure that you're used to it. Um, what I mean by feel it is when you've had a long day of training, a long day of walking, you'll start to notice things like, oh, my right knee hurts when I walk too much, or, you know, I, this, this kind of aches a bit. And that really helps when you're actually on the mountain because you won't panic if something like that happens, you'll just know that that's how your body reacts and you'll know what your limits are for walking and stuff like that. So um, it's really good just to get used to it and listen to your body so that when you're over there, um, you're kind of prepared for how you're going to feel. Okay, so I think I mentioned this briefly, um, it's our information pack. So this is kind of your Bible, it's your go-to for everything trip related. Um, it's kind of advice about your kit, your visas, your vaccines, your day-to-day -day itinerary. Um, a few like useful phrases in Swahili, everything you need. If there's anything that you can't find in there, we are here um, to answer any questions for you. You can give us a call, you can give us an email, um, and we'll get back to you. We are here to help. Okay, so this is your basic kit for trekking. Um, so you need a nice warm hat because it does get chilly up there. Um, you'll need waterproofs because sometimes it does rain. Um, you'll need a nice warm pair of gloves. You'll need trekking trousers. You'll need a nice warm jumper. Um, and you'll need some nice um, waterproof walking boots. <clears throat> okay, so we don't have any like specific recommendations for boots, um, just anything that's comfortable for you and that supports your ankle. So we recommend something that's you know quite high around the ankle, like you can see there. Um, you'll need some nice hiking socks as well because they'll, they'll keep your feet dry um, and also warm on the trek. The key really is kind of to layer up to keep warm, um, as I'm sure you'll, you'll all know. Um, so you'll need a base layer, so you'll need kind of long john type things, and also one of these, um, uh, like like a base layer um, kind of roll neck. You can buy them in like Cotswold and stuff like that. You can either get like a wool one or a synthetic one, so it's up to you, choose whatever you like. It will keep you dry and it will also keep you warm as well. Stop doing being sweaty while also keeping you warm, which is always good. Um, you'll need a down jacket. Um, if any of you have been skiing, I don't know if we've got any skiing fans here, you'll probably already have one of these. Um, if not, ask around, you might have a friend that can lend you one, um, especially if it's, this is something that you, you, know, you think you'll only be doing once. So I mean, a lot of kit, you don't have to buy brand new, you might have a lot of it already. And your outer shell is just your waterproof jacket, your waterproof trousers, um, just in case it does rain, get wet, or you get a bit of snow on you, basically. Uh, there's a couple more bits. Um, so you need a head torch because you don't want to be carrying a torch. Um, get a water bottle that you can put inside your pack and have a little tube coming out. Um, stops it from freezing um, and also makes it easy for you to drink and you're not opening your bag and closing it and opening and closing it. Um, earplugs are really useful because one of the main things you can do to prevent feeling ill and uh, up your chances of getting to the summit um, is get a good night's sleep. So invest in some earplugs um, and a restful night's sleep will really help you a, feel better, and B, give you a better chance of making it to the top. Um, I'll, this will be covered more in the info pack anyway, but bring up a basic first aid kit, fastest paracetamol, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, and also, can't stress this enough, <coughs> sunblock, factor 50, you have to wear sunblock because, as anyone who skis knows, it might be snowing, but you will get burnt, especially that high up. Um, so as I said um, earlier, you'll have two bags, one of them will be carried by porters um, and one of them will be carried by yourself. Um, so you can have either a big rucksack or a duffel bag, it doesn't matter too much. Um, what these guys do is they have like a big, it's almost like a bin bag, but stronger, and they put four or five bags in each and just like sling it over the shoulder and carry it up for you. So it can be either a rucksack or a hold type thing. Um, and your day pack is just your water, your snacks, um, your extra layers. Um, stuff you need during the day. Get used to wearing it. Get a nice one that kind of doesn't put too much pressure on your shoulders. Maybe it's got extra straps across the front. Um, and as I said, just get used to walking in it because you you'd not believe like if you haven't worn it in, how uncomfortable it can get if you're not used to carrying it. 
Okay, so we do offer um, a discount for um, all registered trackers with us, that's 15% off. Um, I think it's a Cotswold quite nearby here, uh, but basically you can go in, it's 15% off for any kit that you need, um, and basically the, the guys there will give you some really honest, like, expert kit talks, boot fittings, without just automatically going for the most expensive. Um, you know, they can give you some really good advice, especially if you haven't done something like this before. Um, if you sign up, we'll just email this barcode out to you um, automatically. Okay, so you will need a visa to go to Tanzania, and it's a tourist visa. Um, it costs £40 and it's valid for 30 days, so do not apply in May. Um, apply so it gives you enough time, obviously you'll be trekking in September, um, so apply to give you enough time that it doesn't expire while you're there, if that makes sense. Um, you can either apply by post or in person. Um, the embassy's in London, you can just go in, um, give your passport in, and it'll be done by the end of the day, or you can send it off. Um, completely up to you, but there's more advice about this in the info pack. Anything visa related that you're worried about, give us a call, give us an email.